Behind me here is my current spray drone trailer setup, but 99% of spray drone trailer setups look something like this, or like this, or even like this. Now if it didn't have the drone and was to go out and spray with the tractor with a cab on it, I would have air conditioning and I would be out of the 100 degree temperatures at the end of July and early August here in Minnesota. That realization of wanting air conditioning has led us to today. I will be installing insulation inside my eight foot storage container, but it might not be for the main reason that you're thinking. Initially, when I was designing the spray drone trailer, I had intended to charge all of my batteries for the drone out of the back of the trailer, right back here in these charging stations, and then use this to fill the drone in like a field driveway. But after more and more consideration, I realized that having those batteries in the back of the trailer and trying to charge them in 90 to 100 degree temperatures might not be number one, the safest thing to do, and number two, probably not the most energy efficient thing to do. With the storage container just being one piece of continuous steel, so the same piece of steel on the inside is the exact same piece of steel on the outside. The best way that I know how or that I looked up to insulate this is to use spray foam insulation, which I will be using on the main three walls as well as the doors and the ceiling to insulate this. Here is the pack I bought from Amazon for about $200. This should insulate the entirety of my little storage container here. It also came with goggles, gloves, mask, everything I need. And I will say, I have never spray foamed a building this big. Obviously I've sprayed cracks in buildings like the one I'm in. So I am not exactly sure how this is gonna go. Fingers crossed that it goes well because I really only get one shot. Oh yeah, feels like a high school little bit of science experiment what we're doing here today. With the spray foam insulation being incredibly sticky and nearly impossible to get off your skin and not good for your skin in the first place, came with this full body suit that I'm going to put on now. Ugh. I feel like I'm like a guy from the YMCA. Isn't one of the dancers in the YMCA wear this? Similar, no? Maybe not, I don't know. Without the instructions in the box, I wanna make sure I do this project right, so we're gonna zip up to the office, watch a handful of YouTube videos first, then we'll get started. Yeah, that was a little bit better. Apply the insulation foam at a distance of approximately 40 to 45 centimeters. Based on that video I watched, there's two main things. Number one, I need to stay at least 16 inches away when spraying, and secondly, we need to spray about one inch of foam, and then it should expand out to about two to two and a half inches. So, might as well get started. I made my first little application here. For some reason, I'm getting heavier streaks like this in the middle portion of the gun. So we're gonna try switching to the smaller tip to see if that helps. My coverage is not the best, there's still a lot of spots, ooh I shouldn't have touched it, it takes a half hour to completely dry, but there's still a lot of spots that are plenty thin. I got that one main streak that I made at the beginning, but it looks like we're ready for can two. The second canister made a big difference, it seems like I got this pretty well completely filled out to what I would say like the level of insulation that I'm hoping for. I now have on canister number three. We're gonna get started on the back wall here as well as get started up on the ceiling. This is what the storage container is starting to shape up to look like. I already have this back wall done. It's been about 20 minutes now, so this is nice and dry. It doesn't stay on my hands. So that's, this is the finished touch. There's still some spots over here that are thin that I'm gonna add a little bit more to. I've used six of my containers. I only bought a dozen, so I definitely am gonna need to order some more. I do like the way it looks. It's just hard because of these ribs in the steel to get like a consistent inch or two inch amount. 
So I'm definitely over applying, which I don't think is a bad thing, but I will definitely need to order some more canisters to finish. I've used all 12 of the containers of the spray foam that I bought. And of course, now the door is basically stuck. I don't know, I'm gonna have to fiddle with that. But before I show you what's inside, this thing is like basically a sweatsuit. I am literally dripping in sweat. So I'm gonna take all this off, then we'll take a peek inside of what it's looking like in our insulated container. Woo! So here's what the storage container now looks like after my 12 cans. If we get up and look a little bit closer, you can see it's not perfect. I mean, there's definitely ribbons where I got a little bit more than other areas, especially there's one big chunk right here on the ceiling. I could file it down, but really it'll work good enough for what I'm using. There's still quite a bit of spots like here that I need to add some more spray but I only ordered 12 cans. I'm completely out of cans for today, so I'm gonna have to wait for Amazon to get those here before I pick back up on this project. Once I get those extra cans and spray it again, I will need to file down the little bit of foam that got on these seals. That way the door isn't so hard to open and close. Same way I'll have to do over there on the walk-in door. Given this was my first time ever using this much spray foam on a project, I'd give myself a V plus. I didn't think it went that bad. I don't think it looks all that bad, but there's always a little bit of room for improvement. With that project on hold, now it's time to get started for project number two for today. I previously, this winter, Grandpa and I installed LED lights in this shed where we store a lot of our seed. And now that we're about halfway done with soybean planting, there's plenty of room in this shed for me to install what will be a third row of LED lights in this building. Originally, when my dad built this shed, he installed lights right here where there was supposed to be like a workbench and hang some tools, but honestly, we've only ever used this building as a machine shed. So those lights have served no purpose. About 95% of the time, somebody just ends up breaking one of the lights, which is what happened right here. So I'm gonna take these lights down and out, and I'm gonna use that very same breaker to power what will be my new row of LED lights down in the middle. Pop. While I've been working on these lights, the weather outside has changed a lot. Let me show you what it looks like outside. It's raining really hard, little bits of hail. This is why we're working inside today and this is why we are not planting. We now have a puddle all over the yard. It poured for, like I said, 10 minutes, hailed a little bit. And one other project we will get to this summer is every time it rains hard like this, the water washes down here all the way down to the field. So we're gonna fix that eventually. This isn't what we needed to continue planting. Mom says the rain's over. So we'll head back inside there, keep working on the light project. You can still see some of the little pieces of hail from the hailstorm that just rolled through right before they're about to melt. These are what we're slamming down on the top of that shed, making it awfully loud. It does say we got a half inch in the gauge though, so maybe we did get a half inch, I'd say a little bit more. But it's 10 minutes past, the sun's already about to poke out, which is the incredible thing about how fast severe thunderstorms move across here. Thankfully, we weren't working outside, didn't need to move anything in, but we'll head back inside now. The old lights were hung over here, now I am going to be stringing a new 20 amp wire. This will feed my four lights in the middle section of the shed since we don't have power there already. Mom's gonna raise me up on the forklift. We'll start nailing down a new wire, running it down in this direction. I said I was ready. Let's see, Mom, are you excited to help me today? Not really, but I'm out here. <laughs> it's a two person job because somebody's gotta raise me up. She likes to sit on the phone while she's down waiting, so <laughs> that's a lie. Bad. A lot of times when you do projects like this, we buy things from Amazon, and by we, I mean her, so. We have no Right. Well, you'll see here in a minute what I mean.
All four of the middle lights are now up. They have run to the power, but the power is right here, and I don't have this hooked up. Mom, how long did that take? It took us about two hours, but I'm going to go in now because I got in trouble for mixing up the batteries. <laughs> she's she's done because whatever. Anyway, she's she's going. I don't feel like messing with this electrical panel tonight, but I do want to see what the lights will look like. So this is a cliffhanger. Hit subscribe down below if you want to see what these lights are going to add to this shed. That's all I got for today's video of High Tech Farmer. Thanks so much everybody for watching. We'll see you in the next one.